clean flick back, Jun. Excellent setup. Ma Maokai, Maokai, no, 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 no flash. Kill Maokai, no flash. He's dead, he's dead, he's dead. Get out, get out. Kill him, kill him, get out. No. Can you run? No, get out, get out. No, no flash, Jinx. You can kill him, no, no. No flash, Aetrop, no flash, Aetrop. Maybe you can kill him. Ah, still coming, run this way. Careful, careful. Nice. That's Azari, and it's piloted by Noah. He's not taking shit from anybody. Quadra. And welcome back to the ADC as we reached match point here between Fnatic and Team Heretics. And I'm joined by the hello. Rat King hello, himself, hello. Kajol. <laughs> thank you so much. How are you doing? Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm doing okay. After the first game, I was yeah. like. Um, is this really what it is going to be today? But after the second game, we're back, so that's fine. I think second game was scary as well. A little bit of throw. Bit yeah, of I don't know what was going on. I think that game was pretty much in the bag, and then everyone just kind of ran around getting caught. So, yeah, one more game, but Fnatic looking a little bit shaky. All right, well, focusing on your stream and your chat and how you're presenting Fnatic and how che you're cheering up for Fnatic, what kind of emotes should we spam right now for this case, for Fnatic playing and for them to do better? Which, um, which one is trending? Well, game one was like a PPX, and now <laughs> I think game two is like a pause champ, you know? It's like we're ramping up, so um, yeah, hopefully game three, it's, it's a 2-1 closeout, because obviously if they lose, they're out, uh -huh. and uh, that's it, split over. I think it sucks a player, imagine like you lose this, you have two and a half months, three months off, it's like, yeah, what do you do with that time? You just have to watch everyone. All right, who's going to be the main character for Fnatic to take the victory, you think? Uh, I think Humanoid's been really good. I think uh, there was not much he can do in game one. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's, um, they're targeting Zwyru a lot in the yeah. pick ban. But Zwyru seems to have a bigger pool than I think they maybe anticipated Fnatic. I think they thought if they banned champions and pick Orianna, they would keep him under wraps, but he still popped off. Um, yeah, I don't know how, what's going on in this draft. Like game one, Fnatic gets trapped by Jarvan with Orianna Jinx. Game two, Heretics gets trapped by Jarvan with Jinx. Mm. So now game three, I hope Jarvan doesn't trap Jinx again. <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on. Clean gameplay yeah. here. That's what we want. Okay, Joel, thank you so much. Oh, thank Good you. luck on your team. Thank you. Well. And shucks back to you. Thank you so much, uh, our favorite Rat King, indeed. Uh, did say an interesting thing there. It really all came down to kind of Jarvan and Jinx uh, situation in draft. Do you think that was as impactful for the two games? Is it really, can we reduce it to that? I mean, I don't think you can reduce it to it, but you can certainly say that it's, it had its values. I think, especially in game one with Yankers, how he piloted triple knockup into the Jinx specifically. And in this meta where we're seeing Jinx and Seri, Jinx and Seri, making sure that the Seri is ahead in the scaling department here, definitely better. Uh, talking about the Zeri, I think we saw two sides of Noah in that game, particularly uh, Broxa. One situation that we're going to look at first, where he wants to make the hero play, and, and we can really see it, right? But he ends up actually making a bad situation even worse, because Azir, I believe, like gets another kill. Uh, but talk about kind of the two sides of the coin. Well, I think, you know, in, in some way, you could argue that the two plays we're, we're watching are similar, in the sense that Noah is in a position where he has to quickly decide within like a second, am I gonna go for this and take a huge risk or not? Uh, one time he goes for it and it's a little bit too over eager, he got a little bit excited. And the other one, he literally ended up saving the game. Uh, but I also think more than anything, this game really showed the power of Siri. I was actually really surprised that Heretics didn't first pick it and prioritized the Sia instead. Because, you know, like Cage will mention, Jinx is nice and all, but the enemy team is just going to lock in Javan and suddenly Siri has so much more value. Yeah, I mean, I guess you also look at kind of last week and how Zwyru had these Azir games where he felt really empowered on. So I'm guessing that's the thinking, Goldberg, right? But on the other hand, the way Noah played that Zeri and the way we know he loves to play it, it is very dangerous. Oh, absolutely. And you can't let any of these Eddie Carry get leeway into the gold department and suddenly just be so far ahead in items. I think after this quarter kill, he was up like 3.5k, almost 4k against the Jinx. And at that point, even though you have the AC and everything that looks so good earlier in that game from Team Eretix, uh, there's just no coming back from that. Yeah, and Broxa, the more things change, the more they stay the same. We heard there, Razork really, um, you know, saying to Noah, yes, this one you can go for, go for it, you got it, nice, you know, that kind of supportive voice uh, when he was dead, of course. Um, but you see that that's maybe also something Noah relies on, because perhaps in a different situation, if he didn't have that micromanaging for Razor, he might have not dared to go for it. It's all a team effort. Well, I think a lot of those moments are really tricky because as a player, sure, you're going to hesitate it, uh, in these moments. Maybe you're going to have it in the back of your mind, like, oh no, if I go for this and it goes wrong, maybe I'm going to be the scapegoat for the series. But I think Razork not only giving him confidence to go for it, but helping look out for cooldowns, judging what to do, 
is what you should be doing as a dead teammate is something that's really underrated. Yeah, absolutely. But I also really think whatever whoever really come, gonna come down to taking this next game, it's also just gonna be who actually bridges their mid to late or their early to mid game into their AD carry. Because you can only do so much as an AD carry in the beginning. It's really how your team plays around them to set them up for success. Obviously, the Javan into the Jinx was one thing we talked about, but I also think humanoid on the Talia into the Asir really gave Fnatic a good angle to find early game pressure that they did not have in game one, and that made it so much easier for them to play these objectives despite them messing up that third Drake a little bit. Yeah, and also, you know, the way you're uh, able to manipulate the terrain to be sure that you can get the kill when you need to. Uh, Broxa, let's bridge this into what we want to see out of the next draft. Uh, Team Heretics has elected to go to the red side, so all the wins have been on red side today already. So um, what is your gut telling you? Well, I think Siri is going to be prioritized one way or the other. We've seen it twice now. Jinx is just not going to have the same amount of values. So I would expect either Siri to be banned or Javan to be banned to make the Jinx stronger. Uh, mid lane, we can see different matchups. You know, there has been a lot of targeting uh, towards the mid lane pool, but it seems like both of these guys are going to perform no matter. So just get yourself a really strong team fighting comp and ideally a favorable position for your AD carry. Okay, GB, do you agree with uh, Kato there that Humanoid has been kind of the main character or can be the main character in this one mid overall and what they kind of symbolize in terms of their teams and staying into the in the race in this spring? I mean, I completely agree and I kind of hope we see something where he can be online from the get-go while his Orianna is incredibly scary. If you're not in a position where you can show up in the mid to late game with the crucial shockwaves, um, you can't really do that on that champion. You can only really do that on that champion. I love the Talia, I love Ares, I love these Aziz, I love the ones where you have playmaking from the get-go and can set up the team. Definitely so. All eyes on mid, all eyes on the Zeri. Who knows? Uh, maybe we'd rather not see it in game three. I don't know, but let's hope we get a banger. Let's head over to Dagda and Dracos. I Can they both pick Zeri? Can we Is go back to 2014 yeah. <laughs> LCK? Otherwise, I agree. I'm kind of over it. I just feel like Zeri, like teams are trading the Zeri for the Jinx. The deaths broke it down. Cage will talk about it too. I mean, it's just... One of these champions is countered by like one thing that you have to draft. The other champion's countered by many oh. things present in many, many drafts. Um, so, see and what the priority is this one? We should go back to Lucian Nami. Stop, Rob. <laughs> no one likes Lucian Nami, man. Stop, stop trying to make it a thing. It'll never be a thing. That said, people have one on it. I have to check my bias at the door. But, uh, you know, the priority on Zeri tends to start going up when both Nautilus and Vi are banned. So, Team Heretics, your move. Are you banning Zeri or are you letting Fnatic pick it? Yeah, now, Rel is... is what you'll give up. Um, and she's really, really strong on this patch. She has been permed in the vast, vast majority of our games. And so they will give the Rel away and Zeri is gone. <sighs> So, uh, yeah, I think you just go for the Rel immediately here. You keep up on the flex for John in that bottom side. More than likely going to go towards Razork, but it's been one of Razork's best champions. He looks insane on this pick, so I wouldn't be surprised to see it go in towards the jungle. It does mean you are essentially trading Rel for the Azir, which they, I imagine they would pick up for Spyro here. And Spyro did have a great game on it last time. We've seen him as well against BDS step up on it, but giving the Rel across is definitely going to be a tough one here for heretics. Yes, very tricky situation. Obviously, you're always going to have to give something away for first pick, but I think based on what we've seen and based on what the balance team has told us by the upcoming okay. list of changes, Rel jungle is completely broken um, and she's just not going to be allowed to jungle anymore. So Team Heretics putting themselves in an interesting position similar to what we saw from them in the BDS series. High is your priority and then obviously blinding the Varus, relatively strong laner, one of the strongest remaining laners with Callista taken away, with Ash taken away. But this is, uh, you know, in the past, Hasn't worked out super well for them as they've often haven't been able to round out their bot lane with something that is going to secure that push that is going to leverage the priority that Varus can give you. But now, Jinx locked in. The immediate Azir follow and <laughs> we've seen this matchup look really good for Aurelian Soul, both in the hands of Niski and in the hands of Caps. Yeah, I think we're going to see a very similar story here as well when you have a lot of damage that can come through from the Aurelian Soul and you've got the setup there from the Rel. So definitely a lot of late game scaling on Fnatic. And then the question is if Heretics want to go towards something that's going to provide the lockup that you want to deal with the Jinx. Sejuani going to be the answer here. So at least opting in towards, hey, we still got a tank. We can still have that front to back. But I still am looking at Trimby to go for something that's a bit more engage heavy. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Rakan band away here by Fnatic. Maybe even looking towards, if you really are worried, Something like the Alistair is that has been traditionally something that we've seen answer as the rel, where you can get that knock up to interrupt the rel crash down. But 
I, yeah, I, I feel like right now Team Heretics are on the back foot, Rob. Big time. I, I yeah, think yeah. that you've got a positive mid lane matchup into the Azir. You have a better scaling AD, and you have the best jungler and one of the better, if not one of the best, supports available for you as a flex. This is a tough puzzle that Team Heretics need to figure out for themselves. Clearly giving respect to a potential TF top side. A lot of setup there. I guess wanting to limit, maybe hoping that they can leverage the advantage of R5 counterpick top lane to ensure that the Sejuani plus X combo can get something done. Maybe wanting to look away from the bottom lane, although that hasn't really been the trend for the series. Yeah, Jarvan going to be banned. So basically saying, hey, we are still worried about that flex with the rel. And we basically have the same problem as the Shinx has is we're still very immobile as yep. a virus, so still an issue. And I think it will be an on-hit virus that they're going to try and go for here as well. Um, but yeah, the Rakan taken away. The re I, I think you're trying to force Trimby onto the Alistair and maybe try to look for a Braum for Jun, just so you still have good engage. You've got good backline uh, safety in the Braum as well. I think that's probably the way Fnatic are trying to force this one. Yeah. Also, if it comes to a full 5v5 and you are playing Boris into Braum, your life sucks, no matter what your build is. You're not a mobile champion. You're not getting around that shield. As long as Jun doesn't make a massive mistake on it, should be fine here. And Debating what Fnatic want to do. Again, they still have the luxury of deciding where the rel will go. Relatively conservative top side in the, you know, Cassante Sejuani. Obviously can have decent gank set up, but not really where we expect attention to be placed. Okay. Okay, it's just a Zac. Okay, so it's a Zac top to try to out-tank the Cassante. Which we like, we like everything about that. Um, and then you've got Zin's out jungle because you want a winning jungle match if you want something aggressive early and they've just uh, put the rel bot lane. I really like what Fnatic put together here and this would be very brave from the side of Team Heretics. This is a champion who wins early or does nothing. So Trimby taking his time to hover. Alistair is Alistair the conservative is the choice. Yeah. Yep. yeah, The so with the rel going bot side, it becomes easier for Trimby to take that Alistair. I think you could have gone for the rel jungle and then still taking the Braum and trying to shut down a lot of what heretics are doing. But at least this gives you an opportunity to try and play off of the pushing bot lane and also then the, the pushing mid that you should get. So I suspect Ryzer are going to be spending a lot of time in Yankos' bot side jungle. And then, as you say, the Zac, this is kind of the original matchup that we got to see Zac kind of thrive in because Wonder just doesn't have enough damage on Cassante to really push you out of lane. And you just constantly get to push that wave state in. And then you got a lot of backline threat, which is kind of what they were getting rid of the Jarvan for, but Zaxel fulfills that role in this composition. Yeah, when you look at the engage options for Fnatic, it's pretty incredible. And similarly, Razor can set up to have a hell of a time here in the early game as the Zin. And as we get later into the game, these are two of the champions, both the Varus and the Azir, who struggle the most to kill a champion like Zin Zhao. Zin's ultimate, um, so impactful against a lot of these higher range and often lower mobility. Although, yes, Azir does have the dash, lower mobility, late game carries. Just can't get into the circle, can't finish the job. And those are the only sources of damage. Everyone else on the team doesn't really have what it takes to kill the Zin. So Fnatic potentially favored here in the draft, but Team Heretics have the room to out-execute, to outplay, to outperform. Keep an eye on how they do in this early game. And as we get into those later fights, I think a little bit of that is going to come down towards Wonder. When you look at the composition Fnatic have, it's a lot of go forward, it's a lot of we will dive together, we will thrive together. But if Wonder's got access to that back line where he's able to get Noah, he's able to get Humanoid from one shot, one of them, suddenly the, the wheels start to fall off for Fnatic. So there is definitely moments where both these teams can outplay each other and it will come down to execution, which is exactly what I want for a series <laughs> that's like this. When it's been so good for so long, it has to go out with a bagger. It certainly does. And I think eyes on Flakid for me, right? We've seen what Zyro can do here. The Varus did not really work well for Team Heretics in the BDS series. And the on-hit Varus, you see a Zac, you see a Rel on the opposite side, even Zin, you know, you get ahead of the curve. On his Varus does so much damage. If you play it clean, it can single-handedly carry fights, no doubt. But it is a lot of pressure. It's not the easiest champion to carry on. Still, though, do expect to get the advantage, at least in the early lane. You will get level one push for Fnatic with Noah and Jun, just because Alistair can't really provide a huge amount in the lane stage. But as the game goes on, I think it'll be a case of Trimby trying to play protect Flackett and then set him up to be that carry. But we'll have to see how it goes, as this just sucks. <laughs> That's the first right. viral. All right. Lightning breathing Space Dragon versus uh, the Zombie Emperor. So, you know, just League of Legends things. Humanoid obviously did get a stack or almost got a stack off of Zyro there. So we'll keep an eye on the 
Aurelian Soul stat counter to get later into game. Reminder, he needs the full channel, uh, at least to get the extra tick of damage to get stacks, or he needs to kill minions or champions within the singularity. That's the E, the little black hole thing. Ulti also gives some, but yeah, you can you can read the tooltips. You got the wall wiki at home. The price I'm keeping my eyes on for this early game though is Rizor, because he's already started on his top side. He said, hey, you've got push in mid, so you're gonna have push in bot lane. Opportunities to get into the face of Yankos. And Yankos also started on his top end. It was a ward placed on his Raptors, so a lot of information passed on to Fnatic as to where he's going. And it's gonna have to be Razor to step up in this game if, if, if Fnatic are hoping to take this one across the finish line and push themselves into a matchup tomorrow as well. And you can see Humanoid continuing to step up in these trades. When Spyro doesn't have access to the Halo Blade, it's really hard for him to trade back against an Aurelian Soul. Humanoid, of course, in the wave has to be a bit more careful. Hard for him to hit through the minions there. Because keeping the clear. Move in. Bot side again, the focus, unsurprisingly. No real point in trying to do anything in the Cassante Zac matchup. So no one gonna come through. Wave crashes and we're still looking at Razork in his own jungle. So I say sigh of relief, honestly, for Yanko, so that there wasn't any sort of funny business. You even see the war going down. So we'll spot out that Jun is there. And Jun was successfully spot out that Yanko's is about to finish off his camp. So I think it will be more of a reset coming through for Fnatic after they take the Scuttle Crab. But Jun's still spot again. I don't think he realizes that he has been spot on that war playing around mid. Trimby can start to walk up. Level two, though, for Rel with Aftershock. Definitely feels a bit more impactful. Trimby still laying the vision down. Jun will spot that out. Finally, Noah will return to lane with an early coal purchase. Knows that in this landing phase, he just needs to be hitting those spikes as quickly as possible. We saw it happens when you're the, the jinx on one item when the opposing AD carries on two. You, you don't do anything. This is really dangerous, though. Razor has snuck his way into bot side, and that wave is pushing out. Yankos needs to be down here to Shadow, but he's on Scuttle Crab at the moment. So Let Trimby and Flank needs to be so safe. Level three is important for Jun. Extra bit of damage, extra bit of movement speed. Yanko's coming down. Team Heretics, they pulled the trigger too soon, though they're gonna find themselves in trouble. Nice knockback comes in from Trimby. Follow-up stun is there. Razork, wind becomes lightning. First blood going to Fnatic and Trimby. Oh, it has to be so frustrating. You thought you had the lead, you just wanted to push it a little bit further forward. You're the phase rush, you're Alistair. You're so damn squishy. And they thought that they had Yankos in tow. You can see he finished the scuttle and moved into this bottom side. So like, great, we have our jungler here. We're going to be fine. But Razark waiting there perfectly. Perfect timing for him to set that one up and get that lead that Noah really wanted in that bottom side. Even has the coal now. With that assist, he's definitely going to start to open up when it comes to gold. And this hurts. Kill going over to the Zin. Going to make things that much more difficult in the early skirmishes. Singularity used in mid lane. Even right again. Trying to push out, trying to get stacks where possible, but Trimby ready to come over the wall. Hex flash just a little bit too delayed. He runs to walking close though. Vision, not enough for them to find the headbutt pole. Yankos is here on the top side. Oscar gonna walk forward and tank the tower. Again, good damage comes in from the Zen. Quick kill pickup. Oscar's got the passive, but he doesn't need to use it. Razork everywhere on the map in this early game. Jun moving to mid as well to cover Trimby on the play. So Irish should be able to TP back in and be able and get the majority of the CS and not gonna be too much of an issue, but Fnatic winning bot, winning top, and getting control over mid. This is where Fnatic look most comfortable. Definitely. And I feel like Fnatic were one step ahead in the draft. Team Heretic's a little bit scared about the Zeri. Weren't willing to take the Zeri Jinx matchup one more time. Wanted this Varus, but the Varus hasn't done anything for them yet, and it's only gonna get harder for Flacka to have an impact when Noah's ahead of the clock, when Noah's you know, got 300 extra gold. Yes, there's a massive wave crashing. It'll be a little bit more even, but that coal is stacking up. Pressure on Team Heretics to, to find an advantage, to find a play to get themselves back into this. And I think it'll be waiting until these ultimates become available for Heretics. Having Trimby's Unbreakable Will, the lockdown the Flacket can provide, trying to work with Yankos. You do have tools that can work in skirmishes, that can work on terror dives, but it's not till later, and that's why Fnatic, with the rotation that they had, the flexibility in sending that rail to the bot side, unlocking Razor onto a more aggressive pick, they've been the ones that are able to play in towards the lanes and find that success. Definitely have. Team Heretic's gonna take this window of opportunity as the resets come through. Grab first Drake in the game, at the very least deny it from Fnatic. Now sitting about a 1.3, 1.4K gold lead. See what the soul spawn will be for now, Nexus Ocean. Humanoid continuing the pressure in the mid lane. Spyro though, taking over to level six. Now's 
when you can start to see the plays being made, but Oscar's already out of top lane. And this is why this champion was such a powerhouse in our previous split. It just punishes these tanky options. We'll move into Fog of War, and the enemy team immediately has to back up because your threat range is massive on this pick. You see, Heretics are aware of it, though. Zvara immediately wards to make sure that he's not going to get caught out. And nobody is entering into that topside jungle. So I wonder... Gonna spot out Void Grubs, but doesn't realize that Oscar is in behind him. So we'll take a little bit of pain as he comes back out, but... This is going to be a very split map, and maybe Yankos wants to try and move back down into this bot side, but this is just tough. Razork again steals away the red, and there's not a huge amount you can do here as Yankos to respond. Relatively muted early game from Team Heretics, forced on the back foot, and now just kind of playing responsively. What Team Heretics are trying to do. Noah, level 6. Flak at level 6 as well. Chains of Corruption going to hit, but not on the Noah. Of course, he has the cleanse. Good bit of damage back. Not able to proc the Blight Stacks on Jun, however. It's not the best trade. Fnatic now setting up for a topside dive. Oscar has ulti. Razork has ulti, but oh, I think he's dead. Back, oh. Are they going to commit for the dive now? Razork, nope, just resets. A little bit tougher, obviously, once Cassante has access to the level 6 and the Ghost. Good pullback. Wonder hates his life right now. This has to be such a... Because <laughs> you're a wet noodle, and Zack is a wet noodle, but he's a wet noodle that gets to leave and gank other people, so it's... These trades probably feel okay, but it just, you know, it feels a lot of stuff feels futile, I think, against the Zach top laner as a tank. Yeah, and I think a lot of what Heretics are trying to do feels a bit futile as well, because you can see the amount of vision that they've set up on the enemy jungle to just spot out wherever Yankos moves. So anything that he does, if he scratches himself in the jungle, they're going to know exactly what he's doing. So this is where Razor gets to just follow him around and make sure that he doesn't get to enjoy the computer game. Pullback from Wonder is good, potentially the start of something. Healing there from Oscar, though. Tough to deal with. Wonder trying to get him on the next round of cooldowns. But again, just that blob. An extra 136 HP. Just, a, just another Rek'Sai top lane, really. Team Heretics, at least, will move in. They're going to take that red buff. That made one person in Berlin incredibly excited. Very passionate about the Bramble back. That's what defensive. They've got two members on the bottom side. Team Heretics, man advantage here. Fighting for bits of vision, trying to gain a bit of control. All right, kind of honestly a quiet game, except for this rocket. Interrupt the back, Ooh. nice. That's just obnoxious. It's great timing, because Void Grubs are up. Humanoid going to reset, he has TP to get back into lane, and Zvaru doesn't, so Zvaru... Actually, yeah, now that Humanoid spots Zvaru sticking around, he's going to stick around as well, but essentially you just try to buy time for Humanoid to get that free reset, and try and force Zvaru to match. And then you have that timer where you can move up into that top end. But yeah, Humanoid just going to completely take it, reset. And then I imagine we'll see Razak move up towards Void Grubs. Although he already has one for himself, so maybe it's not going to be too much threat on towards that. But you do buy time here for Humanoid to make plays elsewhere. Fnatic starting to move as a duo, at least mid, and support into the mid lane. Razor taking the Scuttle Crab. Slow, steady, controlled, Fnatic fighting for mid lane priority. Is this just going to be a reset for Humanoid, or will they try to move up and take the other two Grubs? That does remain to be seen. Trimby about to take over to level 6. This is where stuff gets a lot easier for him as a playmaker. Phase Rush incredibly good post level 6, but uh, tough to play out pre. I'm curious if that's just giving Humanoid enough to buy his first item, because it felt like that's what they are trying to play off of. Just get a couple more waves. Yeah, there. Just enough to get Leandries and also then the extra pot. So nicely done. They just guarantee that. Now he can potentially TP back if he wants, but just going to use the E instead to make his way back into lane. Uh, as Zvaro hasn't really shoved that particularly hard. 45 seconds until Dragon. And at the game, we kind of have a lot of control. Shallow control, I say, for heretics on this bottom side. But it's not really anything to write home about, is the honest thing. This could go both ways. Yeah, I mean, end of game two, we're riding this. Everyone here in the studio, you're, you're riding this endorphin high. Oh my God, it's so intense what's gonna happen <laughs> in game three. It's like, well, they still need to farm and buy items, ladies and gentlemen, that's the joy of League of Legends. You always get a reset. You always get to go to the lower part of the emotional roller coaster before we start ratcheting back up again, slowly but surely. No, I want to be excited at all points. Yeah, <laughs> I want to just be continuously going down really Although, fast on the roller coaster. Look at Anila, I don't know if that's exactly where I want to be, but <laughs> Jun, yeah. he's on ward. Nice setup from Team Heretics. Interrupt on the Zvyro, though. He's trying to flash. He's trying to get the pushback. 
Noah, nice patience. They get the flash from him. Trimby flashing over the wall as well, but Razork now ready to follow up. That's the unbreakable will. Humanoid going in. Singularity, a bit questionable. Ulti comes in from the Aurelian Soul. Ten extra stacks to him. Jinx Rocket is there as the ulti falls away. Razork finds the kill. It's an extended fight, but Fnatic happy to just take the Drake. Fnatic were just waiting out cooldown. So Zvira goes in, swinging the miss as Noah flashes away. And Trimby forced the flash over to join the rest of his team, but Fnatic are waiting for the Unbreakable Will to fall, and they just follow up immediately. So, s dragging a piece now for both these squads, but the kills all end up on Razork at the back of this. But we see it here. Nice call. Like, this is sick. Play over the wall, make sure you're good. But Zwaru goes over immediately into the Junstun, then tries to get onto Noah, can't quite do it. Trimby tries to follow, pops the Unbreakable Will. And Fnatic are like, cool, we can just play this slow. We don't need to overextend, especially when Trimby gets clipped by the edge of the Aurelian Soul ult. Oy. As soon as Unbreakable falls, Razor can go in. And just a bit of a split call here. Again, I think Team Team Eretics we saw coming to this game one, they looked like a reborn, revitalized team. But now we're seeing them fall into the same, uh, you know, bad habits that made the series against BDS so difficult. A few oversteps here and there, a few moments where everyone's not quite on the same page, and obviously a great response from Fnatic and from Noah. We'll be flashless in the team fight to come, potentially something that Team Heretics can punish. It feels like Heretics haven't really had any sort of control to try and take a fight like that, right? When you look at where their vision has been, how aggressive Fnatic have been, and I mean, point in case, really, at the moment, as Fnatic are the ones yeah. that are on the front foot, and Heretics feel like they're scrambling to try and catch up, but they just can't get a footing at the moment. No, and I think you can see advantage in the jungle matchup has mattered so much in this series. Yanko's on the Jarvan, even if he wasn't able to do a lot, was able to really be there for Spyro once Spyro started to get leads or once they started to build up those leads. But in the last two games, when Razork is at the edge, Yankos has just felt super helpless in these early games. And it's not entirely his fault, but the Sejuani game, the Maokai game before it, he just hasn't really had a lot of presence on the map and has just been forced to be so responsive. Now post level six, maybe he can do something here. But again, Razork has Sunder's guy. He's so powerful in the context of the 1v1. Yeah, I've never heard a non-verbal sorry before, but that was definitely what Yankos just did. Walks into Razork and is like, I'm sorry. I oh, I, yeah, I should bad. be here. My this bad. is oh, this is your jungle. I thought oh, we I thought we parked okay. my car here. I'm sorry. I'll sorry. Move on. We're just having fun, right? I wasn't trying to talk trash. My bad. I didn't realize you were jacked. <laughs> yeah, that's super, your boy. Super oh, jacked. I didn't know it was your oh, boy. That was your boy. <laughs> okay. All right. Fair. <laughs> Human of course has the empowered ultimate too. It's only gonna make things harder. Wait, I'll Spyro, a little scoopy, a little boopy, a little bit of Zach is unkillable. Yeah, he's yep. a bit too yep. loopy. Is the problem. Yep. And this is the thing. Spyro doesn't have an item. Oscar's the same level, and Jun's on the way now, and Spyro has to back away, and this is, again, we saw this in winter. This is what makes Zack so obnoxious. Under the right circumstances, he's unkillable. He starts any fight he wants to, and in this case, he scares away two champions by pressing E with a TP from Humanoid. Uh, potentially a bit premature on that TP, but they will knock down this tower on the next wave, and Team Heretics, again, forced to back away. There's not a lot they can play for because Spyro was so low, and in the meantime, Wonder gonna try to get some plates back, or not plates, excuse me, we're past 14 minutes, gonna try to get some damage back topside, but he doesn't go Iceborne, he doesn't have that Sheen proc. He goes Hollow Radiance, and you don't do any damage to towers. And Oscar and TP's in to just add insult to injury as well, making sure they can't respond at all. Oh, oh TP boss, actually. Dragon trying to fly, but Yanko's here to catch him. Nice read on the angle, Humanoid. Overstays bottom lane, an early TP from Fnatic immediately punished. Shutdown goes to Trimby, which is pretty tragic, but Team Heretic's happy to have the pick on a side lane. Yeah, I didn't spot the ward underneath the, the character portrait, so nicely done by Heretics to get that play on the bottom side. No one Razor trying to immediately push in on towards mid so they can get control on the top end, though. They realize that Rift Herald is up, and definitely a nice L way for them to crack open some of these towers and get control on the map at the moment, because yes, you're getting kills, but, and they got the bot terror, but would really like to get down this mid lane turret, and Rift Hell is the easiest way for them to do it. Clean is, later the room completed first items, just about across the board outside of Trimby, beside of Team Heretics, want to leverage that power, want to leverage that strength. Fnatic, because of the pick onto Humanoid, are behind on the play, but Razor's gonna wander in and try to steal here. Flashes for it, but does not get it. Now wants to get the follow-up play. He's already committed a lot of resources, Desperate to get something back. Oscar going over the wall, setting his sights on Yankos, but doesn't have a second target for the stretching strikes. So, well played by the side of Team Heretics. They see their window of opportunity. They capitalize on Humanoid being behind the play, and 
take the objective. And Yang goes interrupted the slingshot uh, from Oscar in as well. So no follow-up engage that was there. You can see Fnatic considering this as Humanoid is coming out of base, but not to be. So at least now, Riptarl and Toe, you can start to fight back a little bit as you push in bot, you push in top, and I imagine Heretic's going to try and very quickly group onto this mid wave as soon as they have these waves pushed in on the top end of the map. It is tough, though, for Team Heretics. The full 5v5 right now. Very easy for Humanoid to create so much chaos in the fight. Reminder, when the Sky's Ascent hits, uh, does a lot of work. There was more nuance there, but the fight started to break out. Singularity onto Trimby, hoping to force the ulti out before the fight, knowing that he'll be useless if he gives it up. Razor stepping up here as Flack is going to ult. Zing going to be forced to ult, but Flack is trying to step forward. Oscar immediately going to try and buy a little bit more space. Pull back from Wonder is there to take himself out to safety. That's the all out use. Keep your eyes on Humanoid. The Skies Ascend ult is big, but the pullback is clutch! Ulti gonna get used a little bit ahead of the fight. That's a lot of damage. The immediate follow-up, the turn there for Fnatic. The Singularity, Noah is untouched. He doesn't have the damage quite yet. Kill for kill traded. Jungler for mid laner, but it's the objective that's important. Zviro stepped up, thinking maybe he could make the play to swoop Humanoid into his team, but the ultimate in return and not being able to get away from it means that Zviro goes down. And it would be Fnatic who were able to get control over the Dragon thanks to the low health bars on Fnatic are on Heretics. Good for Fnatic that are able to secure that. Chemtech Soul again, you know, it's not ideal, but it does matter in a game like this. And as you go in, Wonder just marking Oscar in and buying space for Flacket. So as he goes in, turns around, ults Oscar in in to drag him back in. And again, just trying to keep that protective line in front of Flacket. But as they get the knockback here, I think Spyro steps forward thinking, oh, I can make the play, but ends up walking back down into the singularity. And immediately Fnatic pounds and are able to turn that one around. Definitely a bit precarious, Humanoid oversteps. Doesn't really get punished. Razor the only one who dies there, but his lead, individually at least, is massive. Harold, gonna charge here. No one's gonna hop inside. Team Heretics will knock down mid lane tier one. Big for the extra control they want now. They will attempt to drift, <laughs> but their license has been denied. Razor comes in, just smites that. Positive signs for Team Heretics again. Still the 3k gold lead for Fnatic. Razor is still very terrifying and the Jinx is still scaling, but Team Heretics not out of this yet. They have a TP advantage as well, which is why they've just shoved in topside. And Humanoid now drifting in towards the rest of Fnatic. They want to try and get this mid lane turret with the numbers advantage they have, but if they can force Viro out onto this bot side, maybe that's enough for them to just turn on towards mid. But the wave isn't quite there, and Jun's overextended. Trimby, knockback. Instant follow-up under the tower, good, but the TP is here. Interrupt the three-man stun coming in from Humanoid. A few extra stacks, the Singularity there as well, but Wonder happy to have the kill. Now it's Humanoid, it's gonna be in trouble. Clean CC follow-up. That TP was not what they wanted. Team Heretics want a few more. There's not really an objective to play for, but Fnatic, a little fast and loose would be the generous way to phrase it. It made sense what Fnatic were doing though. Threaten on towards Heretics, push them out into bot side, and then group onto Midwave to get the mid lane tower, just using the factor ahead to get that play, but they didn't ward out. And Trimby playing off of that pink ward sets up beautifully for Flacket's ultimate. And now you've got three members that are completely separated thanks to Wonder's TP. Razor tries to get in, but Zviro is playing keep away on that bottom side, just looking threatening. So Heretics are able to find the picks they want. Good turnaround from Heretics playing off of that vision. Excuse me, I got lost to play. Great TP from Wonder, really making that happen. But Humanoid now on the chase here. Sped up there by Jun. Wonder trying to retreat. Razork really just wants to take Wonder out. Shouldn't be there to try and disengage. Fnatic use a lot to just try and get into range. That's Humanoid's TP gone. So I run now on the side lane with TP. This is messy. If Wonder politely turns Fnatic down. After he says he's already been there before, don't want to do that again. No, I'm fine. And Heretics, they're looking good at the results. As you say, get the bot lane tower. Immediately start to get control over this mid wave as well to ensure that there's no kind of counter punch. Or even if they try and turn on towards Baron, you can still have members move into position. But Fnatic need to start playing this a little bit safer. They've been trying to brute force their way in and just haven't quite really caught up to themselves. On it. I agree. In the grander scheme of how good you want a team to be, it would be nice to see, you know, a bit cleaner. On you know, both sides at certain points. I think it's important that Team Heretics, though, figure out a way to put their foot on the gas. Uh, Varus' damage output, you know, late game, obviously incredibly high, but Jinx outranging. Going to be much more powerful in the 
majority of situations. And Noah's the one who's just been quietly farming up. You know, he's two fully completed items. Now gonna start working towards a third. And that's the thing, this game is still very much teetering on the edge and can go either way. Fnatic checking the barn just to ensure that nobody's there, but they should be able to get mid tower off the collapse here. Oh, on the flak it, here comes the Zac, the Aurelian Soul follow up. It's just like they planned it in picks and bans. The dive is too damn easy. You needed to back away as Heretics, as soon as you committed Wonder to that top side, you had to give that mid lane tower. They don't respect the play. Fnatic collapse, and now they're on towards the Baron. Right, Yankos is dead. Flak is, is dead. You dead. can't do anything here. They're perfect members to take out of the equations. Viro is not enough alone. Wonder hovering. Bit of a spectator to this whole thing. 2K. Fnatic grabbing the Baron. Team Heretic's not respecting the long range engage. It's the first time they've had so many members of Fnatic on their screen. Not appreciating the combo that could come through. But they were so late on the defense. Wonder was pushing in topside, and even look at where Heretics are on the play. And Oskarnan's setting up on vision. Flackett didn't want to flash, ends up getting caught out. And Fnatic, like, yeah, Heretics needed to be there as that wave is approaching the terror, especially when you know so many members of Fnatic are missing on the map. But they don't give up Tower, they give up Flackett and Yankos, and they give up Baron as a result. And a very well executed play by Fnatic, don't get me wrong, the way they layered their oh, abilities, yeah. stopping Trimby from really disrupting the play at the start, it's, it's good stuff, but Team Heretic's not playing with enough respect of what Fnatic's composition can do. Team Heretic's now just trying to force mid, like hoping to draw Fnatic to them so that they really can't get value out of this. Dragon is up. Fnatic can just play for the objectives here. I think it's the right call when you have Baron. Yeah, Dragon's great, but just take your free towers. Team Heretics are zoned away from their own bottom side of the map. They have to retreat all the way around that wall if they want to come in here. And Humanoid has the skies to send. If you fight in this choke, you are going to die. Razork knockback doesn't quite work well with Oscar Rinnan. Ulti over the wall, and the Flacken is big. Oscar trying to buy more space. Let's bouncing out to safety. Yanko's going to go for the interrupt. Flacken untouched. Flacken might be able to make the difference. Jinx free firing. Aurelian Soul just spinning fire. Team Heretics. Getting pushed back. Razork is down, traded for Trimby. And that's with Dragon up. I don't know if Heretics can move in here. Oscar Eden's still trying to keep tabs on where Heretics are moving to. So the rest of Fnatic got to move back and try and take this. Yankos, if you can get into the pit, though, you can steal it away. It's on vision. And here TP. comes the TP. Team Heretics, as long as they don't lose Wonder here, it's not too bad. Unstoppable back up to safety. Oscar from behind, though, that's going to be big. Nice interrupt coming through. The CC on the flak, and the CC on the flak, and it's big. Flak, needs to take out Noah. He doesn't quite have the damage. Noah on the edge. Manages to come out on top. Oscar ran in to finish the job. And that should have been it. It should have been Team Heretic stalling, getting rid of the last of the Baron, but they've still got a minute left on the buff. Three members down. Zviro going to try to punish Oscar. Oscar very likely has the passive, the singularity there. The stun on a humanoid to stop the Breath of Light. Oscar will give his life here. The TP to protect the Zac. Oscar going to try to escape, but it doesn't really matter. And now Trimonoid's in. Why did he go in? He thought maybe, maybe something. I have no idea what, but at least he creates some space. At least he buys time. At least he pushes Fnatic back. But that's three dragons to Fnatic. They got the fight that they wanted. And yeah, Oscar Renning goes down, but you already got so much off the back of this Baron as well. In this fight, it looks decent at the get-go from Heretics because Humanoid and Noah aren't ready in position. Watch Wonder keeping both of the carries at bay, whereas Viru's free hitting. The ultimate from Humanoid is flashed away by Flacket, and he's got a defensive wall to keep him between himself and Fnatic, but as the fight starts to go on, Oscar Rinan starts to heal up on that mid wave. And he's just playing threat this entire time. Yankos can't go forward to help Wonder because he knows that Oscar Ernan would just terrify his backline if he does. And you can see it there as Viro immediately backs up. Has the ultimate for the majority of this fight, but the front line from, from Fnatic is just playing so far forward at keeping him out of the fight. Since Viro's just so far back in that fight, Oscar ready to come over the wall. Do they have any CC to interrupt? He's taking his time, opts not to take the fight. But I think a bit of a moment of miscommunication. They thought that they could get out of that exchange, but Flacket gets caught by the very edge of the singularity, the slow from the Rylai's, plus the pole in, making it impossible for him to Stone escape. as well, just keeping him dragged in. And at that moment, it had been the, you know, the second that that became true, the second that Varus wasn't going to escape, it was kind of the right call for Spyro to stick around to try to at least salvage something, but doesn't want to risk giving his life. And now Jun stepping up again. Rinse and repeat. It's so simple for Fnatic, but Jun doesn't have the follow up. Yanko's creating as much space as he can. Oscar now off to the side. Goes in, but goes down. He doesn't have the passive because of the play earlier. Humanoid, the skies descend. 
Noah here, three items. They are strong, but Team Heretics smell blood in the water. They want more. A minute 50 till Baron, three minutes till the next Dragon. There's just nothing for them to take. It's a glimmer of hope that they get the pick, but there's nothing on the board for them. But it does get their waves back out. Spyro will be able to push top. They'll be able to push out bot wave and keep Fnatic off their base for the moment, but way too over aggressive. And a great interrupt as well coming through from Trimby. It means that Jun can't find the follow-up that he needs. Yes, Fnatic get the tower, but you're too far in. And Oscar Renning gonna go down as well without having that passive available. So you see Jun thought that maybe he could just buy the space they need on the tower, but not able to do so when you've got a Trimby there. Yeah, and if he catches the carries, it's a different fight, right? Humanoid can immediately ult, not worried about whether or not he has the empowered version. Um, but you're just hitting the front line. It's just not a valuable, valuable time for anyone to follow up. Don't want to throw those cooldowns away. That's when the fight really would get turned against you. Fnatic, big gold lead. Soul point on Drakes. Likely to get first push out here and first setup on the objective. They are very favored in this game, but it, it hasn't been completely clean. There have been windows of opportunity for Team Heretics. Fnatic, Fnatic find another engage here. Movement speed steroid coming in from Jun, helping Razork step up at least a little bit. Oscar, the one we have to keep our eyes on for the potential engage. Jun as well. Team Heretics being just bullied back. Fnatic ushering this wave in, ensuring that they have full control on the top side of the map. Jun forced to crash down out to safety. Still though, Black and Flash just up, so that's gonna be crucial for this next fight. Fnatic, a minute and a half until the Dragon could have look to try and get a, a summoner spell out of one of the members of Heretics, but it's a little bit too late now, and Yankos doesn't realize he's on a ward, so Fnatic trying to tease Yankos into the fight and maybe find the engage they want with Oscar Ernan, or maybe burn an ultimate before this dragon starts. Spyro retreating, likely has the death cap in base. TP available, Flash just around the corner. Maybe what Team Heretics want to wait for, having that Flash advantage. TP now coming in, death cap is there. Full 5v5. Neither side gives a damn about their side lanes. All or nothing on the mid lane fight. Wonder looking for the Q3. Singularity gonna stop. Any potential follow up. Full work into the Q3 from Wonder. Not gonna connect. And now Fnatic again just posturing. Looking for an angle in. Both sides. Most of the cooldowns up and available. Noah has his flash. Humanoid not too far off his. Viral will get his first crucially. Trimby's flash just came up and available. That is massive. Literally ticked over, so Trimby can look for the all-in if they group. You see Fnatic fairly close together, and that could be the go button. Waiting for Spyro's flash as well. Right as Bar Dragon spawns, everything is available for both these teams. Recall from Humanoid. Team Heretic stepping up. They don't really have vision here. Yankos whipping on the ultimate, and that's the call to turn. The skies descend, slows on the entire back line. Push back from Oscar, but Trimby sends it back into his back line. It's a disaster. It's not the headbutt they want. It's Viral had it covered, but a moment of miscommunication costs them dearly. Razork cutting through. Team Heretics routed in the fight. TP's back to mid lane. It is just wonder. Retreating to the fountain, maybe he can hold on, but Fnatic looks like they've done it. 15 to 8, and with everyone on Fnatic standing tall, Wonder would be but a blip on their march to victory. Just has to delete the wave, but that last cannon minion stands tall. Team Heretic started strong, but Fnatic, the plot armor there, the performance there, they will move on to the best of five. Tomorrow, Fnatic will face off against either Vitality or Madlines Koi. And with hero performances stepping up from Noah and from so much control offered from Fnatic in that game, they've got to be feeling significantly better than after that G2 series. Uh, Fnatic just got better and better over the course of that series. Their, their game three draft, I think, set them up for success. Your player of the series, he player of the series at LEC on X, Humanoid Noah or Jun. Some incredible stuff in this lineup. And I think I was skeptical coming today. This is the result I might have expected. But after that game one, started to sow the seeds of doubt. Fnatic quickly squashed the doubters. I think it is safe to say we're going to head to a quick break. We've got an interview with Razork before our second series, Vitality versus MDK. Don't go anywhere.